Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter game development series where we are making Space Escape, a 2D top-down space shooter using Flame Engine. So in the last video, I implemented a mechanism to allow components to send commands to other type of components without having to store or get a reference to all those other components. And to test out this command system, we even added a temporary power which allows player to destroy all the enemies on tap of a button. So in this video, instead of adding any new feature to the gameplay, I'm going to add a simple main menu to this game. I generally like to cover such UI changes at the very end of the series, but then it gets too boring for me to do multiple videos dedicated to UI changes. So this time around, I've decided to keep switching between gameplay and UI videos to keep things interesting. Anyways, enough talking, let's get started. So if we look at the main.dart file of this game, we can see that the very first widget that gets added to the widget tree is a game widget. But to add a main menu, we'll have to change this. We'll need a separate widget which will display the main menu and from there it will take us to the actual game widget. This means we can consider main menu and flames game widget as two different screens. So to keep the screen classes separate from the core game logic, I'll create a new folder inside lib directory called screens. Inside this folder, let's create two files. First will be mainmenu.dart and second will be gameplay.dart. As we'll progress in this series, we might need more screens to display things like options and credits. But for now, these two are good enough. Now inside mainmenu.dart, let's create a stateless widget called mainmenu. For stateless widget, let's import material.dart. And since this project uses null safety, this key will have to be marked as nullable. From the build method of this main menu, let's return a scaffold with a centered column widget as its body. This column will contain three widgets for now. First will be a text widget displaying name of the game and next two widgets will be elevated buttons. One for starting the game and one for navigating to game options. The first elevated button will display play the second elevated button will display options. Now obviously, having all three of these widgets sticking together will not look good. So let's wrap this game title in a padding widget. I'll use a vertically symmetric edge inset with value of 50. This will separate out the title from rest of the widgets. Next, when players press play button, we want to start the game. So for this, let's go to the gameplay.dart file. Here, again I'll create a stateless widget called gameplay. This will be responsible for displaying our game world as a widget. And to do that, instead of this container, we'll need the game widget from Flame Engine. So let's just cut and paste the code from main.dart into build method of gameplay class. For game widget, we'll need to import game.dart from Flame package. Then for this game property, we need an instance of our space escape game class. But we cannot just create an instance here in the build method. This is because build method of any widget can be called by Flutter anytime. So creating an instance of our game class inside this method means that it will get recreated again and again on every rebuild of gameplay widget. And we don't want that to happen. So to avoid this, what I'll do is I'll create an instance of space escape game local to this file at the top. And now we can set this instance as game property of our game widget. This way, our game world will not get recreated multiple times. Now back in mainmenu.dart, in the on press of play button, we can navigate to gameplay screen. For this, I'll first get a reference to the navigator using navigator.off context. Now I want the gameplay screen to completely replace the main menu. And for this, I'll use the push replacement method. And as an input to this method, I'll create a material page route with its builder returning a gameplay widget. Next, for the options button, we do not have anything to display yet. So let's add a comment here for now. Back in main.dart, we can now display the main menu as first screen of our game. For this, I'll create a new material app as input to the run app function. Home property of this material app will be an instance of main menu widget. And while we are at it, let's also set the theme mode of this material app to theme mode.dark and dark theme as theme data dot dark and that is it now let's build and run this code to see how it looks okay so we are seeing the main menu here 
but it does not look much interesting right now. So let's improvise this. First, I'll use the main axis alignment property of this column and align everything to the center. Next, I want to set a specific font for this title text. Ideally, I would have downloaded the font file and added it to the pub spec of this project. But this time, I'll be a little lazy and use the Google Fonts package. So let's copy the dependency from installing tab and paste it in our pub spec. Now to make sure that all the text in this game uses the same font, we'll have to specify it in the main theme data of this app. For that, let's go to the material app in main.dart. Here we are using the dark theme mode with the dark theme data being set to predefined theme data dot dark. So to modify a particular property of this default dark theme, I'll use the dot copy with method. In this method, we can specify all the properties that we want to set to a specific value, keeping rest of the properties same. Here I'll set the text theme to Google Fonts dot inline text theme. Google Fonts has a lot of fonts to offer, so you can play around with it to see which font suits you. While we are here, let's also set the scaffold background color to black. Now in main menu, let's increase the size of this text widget. For this, I'll have to use the style property. As I just want to change the font and keep all the other properties same, I'll first get the body text one from theme.ofcontext.textTheme. And on this body text one, we can call copy with changing font size to 50. Also note that here I am accessing copy with method conditionally because body text one can be null. Now let's build and run this. And as you can see, we now don't see the game title. This is probably because default color of body text one is black. But this is fine. I want the text color to be black. Because instead of changing text color, I'm going to use shadows. So for the shadow property, I'll create a list with a single shadow in it. Let's set the blur radius of the shadow to 20, color to colors.white and offset to offset 0,0. .0. And if I save this, you can see that now the title is visible with nice white shadow around it. And if I click on the play button, we are navigated to the main game screen. But we have a problem here. If I try to press the back button on the screen, our game will just get closed. And we don't want this to happen. So to avoid this, I'll go to the gameplay.dart file. Here, I'll just wrap the game widget inside a will pop scope widget. This widget provides a way to add a callback function which will get called when user presses back button. And the function needs to return a future of boolean. If on completion of the future, the result is false, Flutter will not pop this widget. Here, I'll just return a future of false using async callback. Now, let's build and run this to see if it is working as expected. And yes, you can see that now pressing back does not do anything. Now, before I end this video, let's make a small UI change on the main menu. Here, you can see that width of both the elevated buttons is not same. So to keep the width of both these buttons same, I'll wrap each one of them inside a sized box with width property set to one third of current width of screen. And now it looks consistent. So that was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.